that a Wisconsin that have clean government and a state whose beauty is the birthright for everyone who calls Wisconsin home. And it's a state that, that I think you'd agree that believes in that we have a commitment to each other and a belief that we will grow and prosper together. But that all changed when the 45th governor of Wisconsin took his oath of office January 3rd, 2011 and implemented his agenda with the active help of Luther Ellis. In the face of a budget deficit, the first thing Governor Walker and Luther Ellis did was cut taxes on corporations to make the situation worse. The second thing that they announced was to cut education, cutting over a billion dollars of shared revenue from school districts and from the university system, causing tremendous pain to those school districts, which will reverberate for years to come. Wisconsin was the first state to allow public sector workers to organize and make their collective voices heard. I'm a union member myself and have been my entire adult life. Just like the private sector employees like me, we have, or just like private sector employees like me who have been given that right by the National Labor Relations Act. In 1948, the United Nations General Assembly enacted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights for all people and all nations. And in that document, the countries of the world agreed as a guiding principle of international law that everyone has the right to form and join into trade unions for the protection of their interests. And yet Luther Olson believes that creating a second-class citizenry of public workers in this state is sound policy. To ensure that they would stay in power, Luther Olson voted or change voter laws to disenfranchise the citizens of Wisconsin. There will be no more public funding for candidates through tax return. They both have it. They passed a voter ID law, which reintroduces tactics of voter suppression not seen since before the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s. There are 300,000 people in the state of Wisconsin who do not have a driver's license. And they're made up disproportionately of the elderly, minorities, uh, students, and the disabled. They will have to run the gauntlet of this time-consuming and invasive process. They'll have to show proper documentation to prove a 28-day residency requirement designed to strip students of their right to vote. They'll be charged $28 unless they're knowledgeable enough to ask that the charge be removed. State employees have been instructed to never offer that the $28 fee can be removed for a voter ID card. And according to the head of Wisconsin Government Accountability Board, we will certainly face federal lawsuits for suppressing voter rights. And to top it all off, Luther Olson changed state law in order to push through redistricting before the Republicans lose their majority in the Senate next Tuesday. There are voter district maps in this state that look like Swiss cheese, particularly down there where I live. I'm in a different district than the people who live three houses from me. Luther Olson's going to allow me to vote, but he'll steal my vote's effectiveness by crafting districts to keep himself and his supporters in power. George Washington said that arbitrary power is most easily established on the ruins of liberty. And I think Governor Walker's administration has proven the wisdom of that statement. The very first words of the Constitution of the United States, <coughs> the words that the Founding Fathers left to guide us, state, we the people of the United States. I think Luther Olson has forgotten just what the United States of America is all about. There comes a time when everyone is called to defend the rights and principles of this country that this country was founded on. And this is such a time. And you are doing just that here and now. But I want to tell you that you're not alone. You know, last spring, tens of thousands of people rose up and marched around the Wisconsin State Capitol in protest. And I was one of them. Not because I had anything to lose. Because, you know, unlike Governor Walker, Luther Olson, I've never taken a cent in it from any government entity. I marched and marched around the Capitol because I and you have everything to lose. Because the only way that we can defend our rights as United States citizens is to defend the rights of others as well. On a cold day in March, I spoke before 75,000 people who came to the Capitol to protest the actions of Luther Olson and his corporate sponsors. Those 75,000 people came to do the only thing that they knew how to do to fight this injustice. 
I spoke of my son JJ, who scored a college entrance level score on the ACT in the eighth grade. The Oregon School District enabled that kind of performance. Teachers made that happen. Mm -hmm. Kids like JJ are the future of our society, the future of Wisconsin. But those programs are going to be the first ones that are going to be cut as school, district adjust, school districts adjust to Luther Olson's new priorities. In Governor Walker and Luther Olson's world, a good education should only be available to those who can afford it. I was in the State Assembly Gallery when Governor Walker gave his budget address to the state, <coughs> one of only about 20 people who were not Republicans who were allowed to actually enter the room. I was one of the hundred or so people, just by accident, who were inside the Capitol the night the Assembly took the vote on the budget repair bill. I remember I was up on the third level, leaning on the stone wall, talking to some of the friends that I had made in the protest there. And all of a sudden, we just saw all these people just start to come into the building. It was when the police who had been barricading the door stood aside and let the people into the Capitol. And I saw these masses of Wisconsinites pouring through the doors. It just seemed like an endless river of people, tens of thousands of them inside the building. Teachers, public workers, firemen, and just common people like me who know what's wrong and what's right. I don't know if any of you were a part of it, but it had just had an impact that you cannot imagine that evening in the Capitol. <coughs> Nobody wanted to leave. We need to have that strength again. We need that force to defeat men like Luther Olson, who would take from us what it means to be an American. Because only together can we retake our state, our communities, our schools, and our heritage from outside corporate interests. So I ask you, are we going to let Luther Olson destroy our educational system? No. Are, no. We, no. are we going to let Luther Olson trample on the rights of workers that create and protect the fabric of society? No. And are we going to let Luther Olson gerrymander our electoral, our electoral districts and subvert our rights <coughs> as Americans to make our voices heard? No. no. Next Tuesday, August 9th, the people of Wisconsin are going to show Luther Olson just what democracy looks like.